Hi, this is Karen I'm with inspiredbygram.com. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm bringing you a craft fair project. Um, I am not doing craft fairs this year because of coronavirus. All of them have been canceled. However, I am actually prepping um, in anticipation for 2021 craft fairs. So I'm going to take this ordinary pillar candle, which I purchased at Walmart for $1.97, and I'm gonna transfer this into a really nice decorated candle that you can probably sell for, I'm gonna price mine at $6. Um, so this is what they look like. I've got three different ones using three different sentiments from the Gather Together stamp set from Stampin' Up. So this one uses lots of nice little embellishments with leaves, and this one does this as well with a just different sentiment. And then this one, which we'll make on camera today, has this little sweet pumpkin here with some little Wink of Stella. So you've got the glitter. You've got an acorn popped up that we will punch out of the designer series paper. And all of them have this really nice acorn trinket here. Um, so let's get started. All right, so let me clean up my work surface here. Um, so this is a pillar candle I um, purchased again from the Dollar Tree. It measures two and a half inches diameter by two Point eight inches in height. Okay, so I've already prepped this candle here. We'll make sure the wick is going up straight. Um, so this is what it'll look like um, undecorated. Um, the stamp set I've chosen to use is a photopolymer stamp set, which you can purchase on my online store. And I've used um, a bunch of different sentiments on the candles. And then today we're going to use this one here. And we're gonna um, use this one, which is really nice. May this season bring you smiles and love that will last all year. So this sentiment here, you could also use as a Christmas um, candle too. So these instructions I provide you today um, will help you um, design more than just a, a Thanksgiving harvest theme. So uh, the dyes we're using, um, they are right here. Um, I'm using um, this one here for my sentiment. We'll die cut this, and I'm gonna show you how you can also die cut all five of these um, dies all at the same time using the cut and emboss machine from Stampin' Up! along with their new magnetic plate. It's awesome. Okay, so we're going to start with um, stamping. This is just a scrap of very vanilla. Since I'm using photopolymer stamps, I do need to have a squishy surface, so I've chosen this piercing mat here. I need um, some crumb cake ink. All right, so we're going to um, create that little wheat in the background. So when I'm um, stamping, I like to first just do a trial basis um, with the first, second generation's ink, just to see the darkness. So one, two, and three, and this will help determine what um, strength of color I want for um, my tag. I'm going to use the sentiment, um, I'm gonna ink that in early espresso. So I'm just gonna ink this one here in full strength. So now I know that when this wheat is too dark, and then another full strength, that one looks pretty good. And then this one is third generation. So that kind of gives me an idea of what strength ink I want. Now, we're gonna be stamping on very vanilla, so it's gonna be a little bit different than this plain white paper. So I think I'm gonna go with a second generation ink just because I'm using very vanilla. Um, so what I want to do is I'm gonna ink up in crumb cake that wheat, and that's a little bit um, lighter brown color, and I'm just gonna stamp it right at an angle. Oh shoot, that's first generation. All right, let's just turn that over. I knew I was doing something wrong. And then we're just gonna stamp second generation ink. Now we're going to ink up in early espresso that sentiment, and just stamp right down like that. Okay, so now I know um, this die is, it'll fit real nice right there, right up to the edge there, so I'm not losing much paper at all. Now this, the uh, pumpkin, I'm going to ink that. Let me just grab these uh, ink pads and get them out of the way. I'm gonna be using Cajun Craze for the pumpkin. Now I know I could have used pumpkin pie ink, 
but the Cajun Craze is actually the paper, the color that's in the paper that I'm gonna be using, and it looks a lot better. So we're just going to ink this up, the pumpkin up, and I'm just gonna stamp it right down there. Now I'm gonna quickly take my Wink of Stella. I'm gonna actually open up my ink, so because I need that palette there. Um, I'm gonna give my Wink of Stella a little shake. Um, make sure that you've got enough coming down into the barrel, into the brush. I can see it coming down there now. Um, right now, I'm just gonna take my Wink of Stella and I'm just going to um, take that ink and move it into the, the area here that doesn't have any stamping. So I'm just giving it a nice light color with the ink that's already on the paper. Okay, so we've got that good. Now, this still doesn't, to me, look like much of a pumpkin. So I'm gonna take a little bit of ink with my Wink of Stella brush, and I'm just going to keep bringing it in to the pumpkin and making like wispy little brush strokes with the Wink of Stella. Now you can see that the pumpkin is now coming to life. And I like using a brush stroke because it kind of mimics the kind of the creases that you'll see in an actual pumpkin. So again, I'm just taking that Wink of Stella and brushing it right down into the area there that doesn't have any ink on it. And then I'll just put a little bit of in that stem area too. Okay, so I think that's good. So we're gonna let this dry for a second. Now when you're using ink on a Wink of Stella, you gotta make sure you clean that tip of that brush. So this is a little wet right here, so I'm just gonna let that um, dry. We're gonna work on that belly band for the candle. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. All right, so this is the Gilded Autumn uh, designer Specialty Designer Series paper. It's called Specialty. It has the word specialty in it because it has this gold and um, copper uh, coloring in it. And all of these patterns work really nicely with the candles, all right? Um, and again, if you want to make Christmas ones, we've got plenty of, of Designer Series paper as well that you can purchase. But really nice, and since it's not Christmas yet, I decided we'll make one of these. All right, so this is two inches, or two inches by eight, eight and a half. And on the back side is this color here. It's kind of like a crumb cake speckled color. I'm gonna use that as the reverse side. I'm going to actually bring in my silicone mat because for this step, I like to use uh, liquid glue, um, just because I can have a little bit more control of the glue and, um, and just can get to the edges and I can see a little bit more. And I'm just kind of just putting a really fine layer of liquid glue on here. Now, um, it might seem like there's a lot of steps in this project, but there's not really. If you do a, um, a little bit of the prep work ahead of time, you can mass produce these really simply. Okay, so now I'm bringing in some early espresso cardstock, and this is cut, um, the designer series paper strip was three quarters of an inch by eight and a half, and the early espresso is just a quarter inch larger, so one by eight and a half. So we've got this nice little strip here, all coordinates perfectly. Now I'm gonna add the liquid glue to the back side of the early espresso piece. And got that going. And now I'm going to add this piece um, to the strip of Gilded Autumn Specialty Paper, Designer Series Paper, and that is cut two by eight and a half, so you can really get a lot of, of um, strips here in that Designer Series Paper. You can make quite a bit with just one sheet. Okay, so now I want to let this dry a little bit because that liquid glue is um, still a little bit wet. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to die cut. So again, I'm using all these dies here. Um, let me just clean up my area here. I'm gonna make some work surface a little bit bigger. I've got the new stamp or the cut and emboss machine from Stampin' Up. Love this because it just, 
it is very compact, but the um, arms here open up just like this. And then um, the platforms are great because they're all numbered and they have pictures here as to what you're gonna need for plates. So since I'm die cutting and I'm using the magnetic platform, I'm using number one, and then I'm using number two, very easy. And then I'm using the magnetic plate, it's really thin, very thin, and you cut right on top of the gray. Don't cut on the, this side, okay? You're gonna cut on the gray side, the lighter shade. Okay, so I've got those all lined up. Now what I wanna do is, I'm gonna actually gonna turn this so you can see it a little bit better. I've got some scraps, so when I'm mass producing, I like to always cut additional pieces. So in a little tray over here, I have this little glass container that has all my leaves in it. I've got my punched out objects, and over here I've just got some miscellaneous die cuts that I could use if I wanted to. All right, so I've got this here. I need my dies. So I've got mint macaron scrap. I've got uh, crumb cake, and I've got um, Cajun craze, and I'm gonna use the maple leaves dies. Now these cut and emboss at the same time, these dies here. Okay, add this one right here, and the mint macaron there. So now I want to take in this piece here. Hopefully it's not, hopefully it's dry enough. And I'm going to add, let me just move that piece. Um, add this piece here. And notice the dies are staying put. With the other, with the big shot and the magnetic platform there, they have those little circle magnets in there, so the dies would always shift. This magnetic platform is excellent because your dies just stay put. So now I'm just gonna move this over just ever so. Um, I don't need to use any washi tape to keep those dies there because the magnet is doing its job. So now I'm gonna slide in plate number three. Hopefully none of those dies did shift. I don't think they did um, because that magnetic platform is excellent. So I just need to, in order for me to crank this machine, I need to turn it a little bit. So I love the smoothness of this machine because it does, like I'm gripping it and the machine is so lightweight, but it's sturdy enough where it stays put. There's not many noises in it, um, which I actually really love. And then when I'm done with it, all I need to do is close up these here. And it's like a little uh, luggage, right? <laughs> okay, so let's see what we have here. So I've got my die cut with the mint macaron. That one just came out really nicely. And then this one here is the crumb cake. So sometimes they'll stay in that die, but no worries, just use your take your pick tool in the pointy end and that way you'll get them right out and see how that's nicely embossed, all the veins and the leaves. And then again, we're gonna do the same thing with this larger maple leaf. So now I've got three dies, die cuts that I can use on another candle. So I'm always prepping when I'm mass producing. These scraps you can just throw away. And now we have our tag for our candle. Looks really nice. And then I have my pumpkin here, which cut out perfectly, and it's also pretty with all that glitter on there. All right, so let me put these back on my magnetic sheet so I don't lose those dies. That's, I can easily do that. Now we're just going to assemble the candle. Okay, so let's work with this piece first. Now this is like super stiff, okay? Because if you've got three layers on it, I suggest taking your bone folder to break down the fibers like this and that should be good enough okay now you're going to need some tear and tape some really really strong adhesive and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit here and put it on the front side all the way to the edge as best as you can and then we're going to flip it over and on the opposite end we're going to add the tear and tape to the inside Okay, now when you're using tear and tape, you wanna make sure you give it a nice rub so it's easy to take off the backing here. So we're just gonna use my fingernail actually to do it. 
maybe I can't. <laughs> or you can just use the take your pick tool, just like that. Just get that piece right under there to lift it up. And then on this side, we'll do the same thing. So that, that um, the tear and tape is very, very strong, okay? All right, so now let's take our candle and make sure, this is a directional pattern, so I wanna make sure my pumpkins are going up and down. I've got the wick at the top there. I'm gonna wrap this around. Now the one that has the stickiness on the front is gonna go down first. I'm also making sure I've got about equal distance on the top and the bottom of this belly band. I'm gonna call it a belly band, but it's kind of a wrap. And now I'm just bringing this over and lining it up the best we can. This is gonna be the back side, don't worry there. Okay, actually, yeah. Actually, what we could do is we could actually cover this up here, just like that, and no one will ever know, okay, that that's the seam is there. So let's do that. We need to have um, some tear and tape on the center of this label. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little piece, put it right in the center, and then I'm just going to lift it up. I'm also going to take my um, 1 8 inch circle punch and I'm just going to punch a little hole up at the top there. And then I'm going to um, actually, where's my silicone mat? Let's just put this down here. I know I've got the stickiness on the back side, but that's okay. I don't want to lose it. I'm going to take my linen thread, it's just a piece here to make a bow, and I'm also gonna use the um, acorn trinkets, they're super cute, you guys. I'll try to give you a close-up on them. Just a cute little acorn, makes a great embellishment. I'm gonna thread the linen thread through that acorn, then I'm going to thread it through the tag, just like this. Um, and then I'm just gonna put that down there for a second because I need to tie a bow. And it's easier if that tag is stuck to something and you will have a little bit more control. So this is enough thread there so that's dangling. And got the bow there, turned out not too bad. I'm just gonna fussy with it a little bit to get those loops a little bit lower. I'm gonna take my ribbon scissors just to give this a nice little trim so it's not too long. Um, so it's looking really good. And then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add it to the, the candle. So I'm gonna go right over that seam so nobody knows there's a seam there. And give it a nice press like this. And now I'm going to um, work with the pumpkin here. I'm going to just use some uh, stamp in a seal to add a little bit of adhesive to the left side of that pumpkin and give it a good press. Then the final touch I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the paper pack, you have all this, this just, um, paper here. And you can also order the autumn punch. And there's three different punches that come with this. You've got an oak leaf, you got an acorn, and you have a maple leaf. Oh, I'm not sure where my punch is. The, oh, here it is, the maple leaf here. So we could um, punch out an acorn. Let's do that, because I really like the acorn. And to do that, what you wanna do is just cut out a little piece here. and then find your acorn punch. And by cutting a piece, a small piece out, it's easier to handle the punch, okay? So that's real sweet acorn. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna add a mini dimensional to the back side, And then I'm going to add the acorn um, right over. Um, to, I don't want it going down, so we'll just add it right to the left side of that pumpkin, and we'll call it good, okay? So there's our candle. 
Um, let's bring them all back into the picture here. I love that the, the pumpkin one is the my most favorite because I guess I just like it so much because it has the Wink of Stella. So here's the one that says Season of Thanks. And then, it's hard to keep these on camera. Here's another one using all those maple leaves. So my next candle will be one that has a maple leaf on it because I've already cut those. And then finally, he, um, here's this one. So I hope you guys learned something new. I am going to sell these for $6 a piece because um, I think I have about $3 worth of product in here. Um, and then try to see how it goes. Um, I'll package these up in a clear bag just so that people um, don't touch them and they don't get dirty with the hands. So um, for all your Stampin' Needs and to purchase any of the products that I used today except for the candles, you can find that at inspiredbygram.com and don't forget to use your host code, uh, my host code here. Um, I will always have a host code so just check on my website inspiredbygram.com for that host code and a link to my online store. Thanks for watching.